we are asked to simplify the given radicals. Notice in both radicals, the radicands contain variables. We simplify radicals with variables the same way we simplify radicals without variables, except sometimes the simplified expression requires an absolute value. In general, when simplifying a radical expression, if the index is even and a variable outside the radical has an odd exponent, an absolute value is needed. So looking at the first example, we have the fourth root of 81 x to the eighth y to the fourth. Because the original index is even, after simplified, if any of the variables have an odd exponent, we must include an absolute value. So beginning with the fourth root of 81 x to the eighth y to the fourth, because the index is four, we're looking for groups of four equal factors of the radicand. So to begin, let's determine the prime factorization of 81. 81 is equal to nine times nine, and nine is equal to three times three. Notice 81 is equal to four factors of three. So let's write this as the fourth root of three times three times three times three. And again, because the index is four, we're looking for groups of four equal factors. Let's write x to the eighth as x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared. Notice how here we have a group of four equal factors of x squared. And let's write y to the fourth as y times y times y times y. So notice here we have a group of four equal factors of three. Here we have a group of four equal factors of x squared. And here we have a group of four equal factors of y, which means this is going to simplify perfectly. But let's also write this using our exponent properties. Let's write this as the fourth root of three to the fourth times x squared to the fourth times y to the fourth. And now simplifying, the fourth root of three to the fourth simplifies to one factor of three. The fourth root of x squared to the fourth simplifies to one factor of x squared and the fourth root of y to the fourth simplifies to one factor of y. But remember, because the index is even, any variable outside the radical containing an odd exponent must contain an absolute value. So because we have y to the first here, our simplified expression is three x squared times the absolute value of y. This assures the principal fourth root will always be positive. We don't need to include the x squared inside the absolute value because if x is negative when we square it, the result will be positive. Next we have the fifth root of 64 x to the tenth y to the sixth. Because the index is five, we're looking for groups of five equal factors. We begin by determining the prime factorization of 64. 64 is equal to eight times eight, eight is equal to four times two, and four is equal to two times two. Notice 64 is equal to six factors of two. So we have two times two times two times two times two times two. And because we're looking for groups of five equal factors, let's write x to the 10th as x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared, and then we have y to the sixth. Let's go ahead and expand y to the sixth as six factors of y. And now it's circle the groups of five equal factors. Here we have five factors of two. Here we have five factors of x squared. And here we have five factors of y. The circled factors will simplify perfectly the factors not circled will remain under the radical. But let's rewrite this one more time using our properties of exponents. This is equal to the fifth root of two to the fifth times two times x squared raised to the fifth times y to the fifth times y. Again, here we have five factors of two, five factors of x squared, and five factors of y. So the fifth root of two to the fifth is equal to one factor of two, 
the fifth root of x squared to the fifth is equal to x squared, and the fifth root of y to the fifth is equal to one factor of y, and we're left with the fifth root of two y. In this case, because the original index is odd, no absolute value is required. I hope you found this helpful.